Welcome once again to a tutorial on uh, circuit theory and uh, today we're going to learn about the Milman's uh, theorem, okay? So it's one of uh, the network theorems again, uh, but before we go into the theorem, let's just well uh, take an example of a network. Okay, there you go. So here's our uh, network under uh, discussion over here. So okay, so you, you, you can basically you know see in this uh, uh, network over here that well there are multiple uh, voltage sources in uh, parallel to each other as well as their uh, you know um, internal resistances uh, R1, R2, R3 uh, till Rn. So if we have well if we have you know uh, a number of voltage sources and their uh, resistors, you know, connected in series with each other. Well, uh, if, if we just view each arm as a uh, single uh, voltage source, okay, so if we have basically a number of voltage sources, you know, connected in uh, parallel to each other, okay, uh, across that of a, I mean, uh, if both, I mean, all of them are, well, driving a load resistor, as you can see over here, that's RL, okay? So if number of uh, voltage sources in parallel are driving a volt, I mean, a load resistor, okay, then basically what happens is that if we uh, just, uh, well, try and simplify the circuit over here, we can do it by uh, using the Milman's theorem. So, uh, well, Milman's theorem basically offers us a way in order uh, to well simplify such a kind of uh, circuit uh, because you know uh, such circuits could be you know really really complicated if it you know comes to well real life problems as such. So um, well, just keeping that in mind, let's just state the theorem as such. Well, the statement of the uh, theorem basically says that well when multiple voltage sources are in parallel uh, having uh, internal resistances respectively the arrangement can be well replaced by a single equivalent voltage source v in series with an equivalent series resistance okay so if you just take a look once again at our uh, circuit diagram okay there there you go that's a circuit diagram so it says uh, well, let's just put them together. Okay, that's better. So it says basically that uh, when there are multiple voltage sources uh, connected in parallel to each other, having their internal resistances respectively, the arrangement can be replaced. It, it means that, well, we can just replace the uh, entire left part of this uh, circuit over here uh, using a single equivalent voltage source in series with a single uh, resistance, okay? So that sounds quite an interesting option in order to, well, just reduce this network. So basically, uh, the statement says that we can uh, basically reduce uh, this entire network into something like this figure that we have over here, okay? So you can see that we have an equivalent uh, voltage source and, well, there's a series resistance as well, uh, representing the, um, you know, internal, uh, I mean, the net internal resistance uh, of this uh, equivalent voltage source. Okay, so um, you'll, you'll probably uh, might be wondering as to, well, how can we do that? Okay, it's quite an obvious question. I'll, I'll give you a hint over here. So, if you just, well, uh, take for example, let, let's say just uh, in this uh, uh, figure on the uh, left over here, if we, if we just, well, uh, go forward and uh, assume that, well, due to uh, the uh, presence of each of the uh, voltage sources and their equivalent uh, series uh, resistance over here, uh, that's their internal resistance is concerned, so it should uh, be able to, well, um, output a uh, certain amount of current. So let's just say that uh, the source voltage, I mean the voltage source V1 outputs a current of I1 uh, whereas uh, V2 would output a current of I2 and well uh, V3 would output I3 and so on. It'll go on till let's say Vn uh, just giving an output current of about In. So if you'll, uh, well, now take a look uh, at, at the uh, arm where uh, RL is connected. So when all of these, uh, well, currents, they, they just, well, uh, reach about this point. Let's just call it, let's say, the X and Y nodes over here. Okay, that's better. So whenever all these uh, current components, you know, uh, they just come through this common wire and reach this uh, n common node X right over here, then uh, according to KCL, they basically, well, uh, they just add up together 
to give us a, a total current. Let's just uh, let's just denote it with the symbol I T. So they they just give us a total current that's I T, which is of course the uh, summation of all the currents that's just entering into the uh, node X. So we can write it down as well. This is I one plus I two plus I three, and well, it'll go on so on till. I n is reached. So this entire, uh, you know, the total amount of current that should flow through this uh, load resistor over here would be the uh, summation of the uh, currents individually, uh, well, coming from the uh, voltage sources connected in parallel to each other. Okay. So now, if we just well uh, take this current as well passing through this resistor, I mean the, uh, this load resistor over here, so it obviously would create some sort of a voltage about itself. So it'll obviously well create a certain amount of voltage drop. Let's just call it, uh, okay, so let's just uh, call this as V, okay. So if it just, well, uh, leads to a uh, potential drop occurring across this load resistor, so it's quite obvious that, well, we can represent this as, uh, you know, an I mean, uh, we, we can basically, you know, go forward and represent this whole thing with a equivalent voltage source uh, connected in parallel uh, to this uh, load over here and also you can uh, also see over here that uh, these uh, resistors over here they limit the current to an extent so obviously this uh, voltage drop that occurs due to this amount of current uh, would obviously uh, be limited by some sort of series resistance so series resistance is you know connected i mean uh, you know resistance is you know basically you know connected in parallel they also give rise to a net resistance in the uh, circuit so we can just well use this sort of uh, uh, design philosophy uh, behind this theorem and well go forward in order to follow this statement as well so let's just well uh, mathematically uh, find the uh, validation of this uh, theorem over here. Okay, so let's just go towards uh, the statement once again. So it says that when multiple voltage sources are in parallel having internal resistances respectively, the arrangement can be replaced by a single equivalent voltage source V in series with an equivalent series resistance. So let's uh, just, well, uh, take this figure over here as our uh, example and, well, let's just try and find out uh, how we can basically obtain such a um, well simplified uh, network uh, representation. Okay, so uh, let's just copy our diagram uh, over here. Okay, here it is. So now if we, uh, well, uh, just keeping in mind uh, the issue about the uh, currents over here, that, that's the uh, philosophy that we just uh, talked about uh, previously. So if we just uh, well keep that in mind and convert all these uh, you know voltage sources into uh, their equivalent current sources then well suppose uh, yeah then we're supposed to probably get some uh, sort of figure uh, down below as I'm gonna well show you over here. Okay there you go. We're supposed to get well something uh, like this if we just would replace the uh, voltage sources uh, with and then just you know convert them into their respective equivalent current sources okay so uh, well here is of course let's just call this uh, sources i1 then i2 i3 and that that has just go on to well let's say till i n over here okay so that's our load uh, resistor at the end and of course uh, well as you all might be knowing that we can also uh, well represent uh, you know the resistances as well in terms of the conductance, we can just represent a, a resistance equal to one by the uh, respective conductance. Okay, so let's just call uh, this uh, resistor. Okay, if we just well write it as let's say one by G one right over here. That's better. Okay, so that's not so clearly visible. Okay, I'll write, try to make it better. Okay, that's better. So that's one by G one, and then you have let's say one by G two then one by G3 and this will go on until we reach one by GN. So there you go, we have the uh, respective uh, resistors. Well, let's just, uh, exp we've just, well, expressed them in terms of the uh, conductance of the circuit. So now if you just, uh, well, take a good look at this, uh, uh, you know, equivalent representation of the above circuit over here. So you can, well, pretty much easily understand that the total amount of current, as I said oh, back there uh, previously, that the total amount of current, uh, let's just call it, let's say, uh, I T. Okay, so let, that's the total amount of current entering the load resistor RL is obviously a sum of all the uh, currents that's going to uh, basically you know, generate from the uh, current sources uh, given over here. And now 
we can also see that all the uh, conductances, that's their uh, resistors, okay, that, that, that you'll basically gonna have over here are in parallel to each other. So if we just, well, uh, you know, uh, if we just go forward and find uh, the uh, uh, total, uh, you know, um, the uh, parallel resistance, that's the um, you know, equivalent resistance of this entire circuit. So we can also, well, put it over here that, well, this is, uh, or rather I'll just put it above. Okay, so this is of course, you know, um, R1, okay, R1 as equals to this one, and then you can also have, well, R2 as equals to 1 by G2, uh, or rather, uh, if I just, well, a little better if I just uh, put it a little upward, okay, this R1, which is of course, you know, equals to this thing, and then we can also, you know, replace this by R2, and then R3, okay, so if we just go on doing that, well, so we just, uh, uh, you know, I just uh, wrote down the, uh, you know, R's over here for your easy uh, and convenient reference, okay? So uh, if we just, well, try and find out the uh, equivalent resistance of, uh, I mean, the uh, net resistance of this uh, particular circuit uh, when we just express them in terms of their current sources, so then uh, obviously the um, net resistance would be given by, well, 1 by R equivalent that will be, uh, well, equals to, uh, well, 1 by R1, plus that of 1 by R2, and then 1 by R3, and this thing would go on until we reach, let's say, 1 by Rn. There you go. So now, uh, well, we can represent this, uh, since we can see that is is a reci uh, you know, uh, the uh, reciprocal of uh, the um, resistance over here, so we can, well, pretty much write it down as uh, G, okay, so we can just write it down as, let's say, G equivalent, okay. So there you go. So now uh, we can also, well, put it uh, like, let's say, G1 plus G2 plus G3. So if we just represent this whole thing in terms of the uh, conductance of the, you know, the resistors over here. So now just keeping that in mind, if we just, well, uh, go forward and, you know, take up the total current over here as well. So then obviously, let's say, well, IT would be equal to, as I said, well, I1 plus I2 plus that of I3, and well, it'll just continue till I n. Okay, so now if we are uh, basically trying to, you know, uh, reduce this network uh, from here on, then uh, we should pretty much take uh, into account, uh, well, these two equations right over here. So the, these are uh, the important turning points of our, uh, you know. Uh, session over here. So we can see that we have uh, from this circuit that we have an equivalent, uh, you know, uh, conductance uh, for the circuit as well as we have a total amount of equivalent current that's supposed to flow. Well, so just keeping that in mind, we could basically, uh, you know, modify this whole thing into a single uh, current source operated circuit where we can, well, basically, uh, if, we, if we just, well, uh, draw a current source right over here, uh, let's say, and then let's say if we just, well, draw a resistor over here, there you go, and now let's just connect it together, okay. So there you go. So that's almost done. And now if we just well try and uh, connect uh, the uh, load resistor as well. So in that case, okay, let's make the connections final. Okay, so if we just well uh, take uh, this as an equivalent uh, current source driven circuit, so then using uh, these uh, two equations over here, we can just write this current source as well, IT as you can see over here, which is of course a summation of all the currents that's supposed to enter the uh, load resistor, so that's RL over here. And well, this, uh, you know, our one by R equivalent is of course uh, the uh, G equivalent that we have over here. Uh, it could be basically, you know, we're supposed to, well, reciprocal, uh, I mean, we're supposed to, well, uh, invert this thing in order to, well, find out the value of the equivalent resistance. So this over here is of course the equivalent resistance, and we know that, well, the equivalent resistance would be found out by you know reciprocating uh, the value of the equivalent conductance which we got so this would be 1 by g equivalent so that's that's exactly what i'm just trying to say so we can just uh, reduce this whole thing into a single current source operated network as you can see over here 
and now if we just go forward a little more just just a little more then we can obviously get uh, well a voltage source operated circuit if we would just uh, well convert this entire thing into uh, you know a voltage source over here uh, you know using the uh, basic uh, conversion techniques that we already know so here we are gonna have our uh, series resistor and of course our load resistor as well and now let's just connect them together and possibly we're gonna see something new over here so there you go that's the connections completed and here's our voltage source okay so over here the voltage uh, you know uh, provided by the voltage source would be given by well uh, the current that we got in this uh, current of uh, you know current source operated circuit over here that's the IT multiplied with uh, the uh, you know the value of the resistor over here uh, that's uh, you know giving us the equivalent resistance so that's exactly the voltage drop that's occurring across the uh, load resistor over here so if we just go forward and well multiply uh, these two terms together so if we just go forward and do that so we're gonna get well IT multiplied by R equivalent so that's exactly uh, the uh, value of the voltage drop that uh, we're supposed to get so we can just put it over here uh, as the uh, equivalent voltage that's coming from the voltage source so there you go and now we can just well the conversion technique states that we can just well put forward uh, the uh, value of the equivalent resistance right over here so that's the R equivalent and here's RL so you can see from this uh, particular transformation that we've just well reduced this sort of a network into a single voltage source operated network over here and now this entire uh, now this uh, voltage source which I uh, I mean uh, the voltage that I have just well uh, you know found out over here if I just you know expand this thing then we are uh, well supposed to get V as equals to well uh, this expression as you can see over here well V1 G1 plus that of V2 G2 V3 G3 and then V and G and well add it together and divided by the uh, sum of the uh, you know conductances so you can well easily uh, get this term if you could just well use this uh, particular uh, relationship that I've shown over here so that's a little bit of you know homework exercise that I've just set for y'all and we can also well um, obtain uh, the uh, you know uh, the resistor I mean the uh, resistance of this uh, you know equivalent uh, uh, resistor that we have well uh, obtained over here so this R equivalent would also be uh, well given by well 1 by G that's uh, the G equivalent over here so that will be well 1 divided by well of course the uh, G1 plus that of G2 plus G3 plus dot 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 till GN okay so this is uh, of course the uh, total voltage well offered by uh, the reduced uh, network over here the uh, voltage uh, developed from the uh, voltage source over here and of course the equivalent resistance of this reduced network uh, expressed in terms of the conductances okay so that's just bring us to the uh, end of this tutorial video hope you've uh, enjoyed it and don't forget to uh, watch our next ones as well. So see you in the next one. Till then, it's just a short goodbye for now and thanks for watching.